Okay, so day one of exponentials. Is it exponential or not? Yes, because it has a x in the exponent. Good. All right. Is it growth or decay? It's decay because this number is what? Less than 1. Okay, so you could write it as a 1 plus or a 1 minus something. In this case, it's a 1 minus something. Anytime you do 1 minus, that means decay. 1 minus a half would be the same thing. Now that's 50% decay. Okay, what's this number right here? Starting value. That's the A, yes, and it's the starting value. Okay, day two of it. Day two of it, we talked more about the graphs. We also talked more about what happens if there's a negative up here. That's like a negative 1 up in the exponent. Okay, well, all of a sudden this goes back to 1 minus a half is a half, and then you go, the negative 1 makes you flip that, so that's really actually a what? A 2. So you want to get rid of any negatives before you decide if it's growth or decay, because now it started with a half, looked like it was going to be decay, but when you factor in a negative on the exponent or on the x, then it really would be like this, and now you can tell it's actually growth. All right, I want to try something like that. Growth or decay. And I want you to figure out for me what the decay rate is. Remember, E is about 2.718. That's something you should have memorized. Test is coming Friday. That we have more time, but we really don't. Today is the last day of new stuff. Then Thursday, we do a review. And then Friday is a test. Okay. That right there needs to be done. Mr. P, tell me what that negative up there tells you to do. Good. Flip it. Turns into just E to the X. There we go. Now is that growth or decay? Growth. Because you could rewrite this as a 1 plus something. Since E is about 2.718, it's 1 plus what? 1.718, which means it's growth of about what percent? What's that mean tell you for percent? Move the decimal two spots always to get percent, so 171%. 172 if you're going to round it. Percent growth. Okay, because E is 2.718, and this is 1 plus 1.718. That's how it got looking so strange. Okay, let's do another one like that. Um, at first it looks like it's decay, but then you'll figure out, oh, because of that negative, it's not decay, it's growth. But I want you to figure out what percentage growth is it. Since the beginning, I've been talking to you in terms of uh, applications of these, like populations. So this won't be too hard of a stretch today, because all i got to do is tell you about applications, and most of them are like populations questions. So I've kind of been pre-teaching that so that when we get to it now, it should feel easy today. Some of you are probably trying to figure out how the heck to flip a decimal. Well, don't make it a decimal then. Make it a fraction so it'll be easy to flip. So what is 0.75? Three-fourths. Or 75 one hundredths. Either way works. And then you flip it. So if I use three-fourths, I'm going to make it flip and make it four-thirds. Now the negative's done, and I've got a real number that I can trust. That is bigger than one. Would you agree? And therefore, it's growth. Then you rewrite it as y equals six times one plus one-third to the x. And then i got to know what one-third is as a decimal, 0.3 repeating. And therefore, what percent growth is it? 33% growth. Okay. Implications. You've got, uh, let's say, 25 kids uh, in the SEAL program at the high school. You heard of the Navy SEALs? It's like insanely hard to like you know stay in that. They have a bell that's hanging on their uh, base. And it's just waiting for people to ring it. 
to get into the SEAL program, you had to be really tough in the first place. Okay, and these guys are tough. And then they work them so hard that eventually they wear them down and they crack and they just say, I can't take it anymore, and they ring the bell. That's really the only reason you leave is if you ring the bell. You might think, well, and well, I just wouldn't ring the bell. Eventually, you would. Or you'll make it and you become a Navy SEAL. All right, so there's obviously an attrition rate. And so attrition means like it goes down. It's a decay rate. You start off with 25 guys, you're not going to end with 25 guys. Okay, let's say that they hope to end with like 15 of these guys because they start with 25 really solid, amazing guys in the first place. Okay, and then... If you have 25 guys to start with, I'm actually starting an equation here, and we as assume that we're going to have a decay rate of, let's say, 20%. Write me an equation for that. So 20% decay, that implies a 1 minus situation. Another, if it doesn't have an X in the exponent, it won't be exponential. So make sure you have that too. All right, I want you to compare your answer with, I'm going to just do people across from each other today. So straight across, these two rows, these two rows straight across from each other, except for the people in the back row, Miss D and J there, all right, and Mr. G, uh, are going to compare. And you guys have to go diagonal, 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 diagonal. All right, and you're diagonal with, yeah, you can figure it out. Okay. If there's three people that have to work together, go ahead. Show your equation to them. See if you agree. 20% decay started with 25. Okay. 25 to start with, 1 minus point, what did I say, 20% decay? 1 minus 0.20 to the X, raise your hand if you had it right. Okay, good. Interesting note on the SEAL program thing, uh, they actually don't want that many guys to quit because they need a fair amount of Navy SEALs and they narrow it down in the first place even to be invited to the program. So they, they don't make it easier, but what they figured out that made the decrease their dropout rate, made people able to handle the stress and the pressure was actually breathing. Have any of you been taught how to breathe? Raise your hand if you have any training at all in breathing. All right, so four of you know, probably know what I'm talking about. Um, if you've been uh, trained, you know, obviously you breathe, you just do it naturally, right? You must think well, there's no other way to breathe. If you control your breathing, you can control your stress. You can control your heart rate based on your breathing. And you can control it if you think about it. You can force yourself to breathe a certain way. You can't, like, think your heart rate different but you can control your heart rate through your breathing. So anyway, they were able to, through this breathing techniques that they teach the SEALs, they, were, they get, got the attrition rate down, so the more guys were able to handle it and make it through. So if you ever are in a really stressful situation, uh, you can, there, there are breathing techniques you can use. I, I won't try to teach you right now, but there's something called the box breath, uh, where you basically uh, take your long, slow breaths and hold them, uh, and you do that, I think it's like four times. Uh, it's a pretty simple technique. I'll teach you something. Anyway, the box breath. Decrease the attrition rate. All right, so let's, instead of saying we knew what the rate was going to be, let's say we didn't know what the rate was going to be. But we knew that it went from 25 guys down to 10 guys. Over the course of, let's say this problem was in months, over the course of three months. Do you get now I only have one variable and therefore I could solve for it? All right. So if I was going to do this, if you did have to solve this, first you got to know this was the start, and then let's just use simple language, what would that be then? If this was the start, what's this? The end. And this is the rate, and that is time. And it could be months, years, whatever what the problem's in. And that's why I said at the beginning we should say in months, and let's say I'm going to make this in months. In three months, we had 10 guys drop. Or, sorry, 
We had 15 guys drop because they ended with 10 people. All right. If you're going to solve for n, you got to get the clump alone. That's the clump. You got to get it alone. How would I do that? Divide by 25, and then that cancels. And then how do I get that to the power of 3 off of there? Put it to the 1 third. So I now have 10 over 25, which can be reduced. 1 plus n to the third. And then I'd solve by going, first I'm going to reduce 10 over 25. 5 goes in there 2 times and 5 times. Now I'm going to put it to the power of 1 third, 1 third. And now I have 1 plus n is equal to 2 fifths to the 1 third. At this point, I wish I had a calculator. And if we had something this tough, you would have a calculator. We won't be making it this tough. And then I'm gonna, I would just have to find this decimal and subtract 1, and I'd know my rate. Yes? Oh, that is supposed to be a minus. Sorry. Sorry. You're right. That was just an oops copying oops. That was a minus, so that should be a minus, and that's a minus. Yep, good point. Okay. Let's do another uh, relatively um, straightforward real world like what you're going to have to do type question. Um, let's say that your initial value is 5 and you're decreasing at a rate of 1.6%. That rate's where I expect people to get messed up. Write me an equation for that. Starts at 5, decreasing at 1.6%. Did you say y equals starting value 5, decreasing 1 minus, all makes sense to you? And then the 1.6% is this is where you could mess up. If you put 1.6 there. Because that would mean you're decreasing at 160%. How many of you actually put 0 0.016? Raise your hand if you did. Okay, good. Nice work. And then what do I have that kids often forget because it seems like extra? the x. It has to have an x or it isn't an equation with an x and a y in it. So there we go. x and the exponent. You made an exponential. Okay. Now let's talk about the flat last kind. I'm doing a little bit of review today just because it'll make you smarter tomorrow. Um, let's say I give you a problem like this. Can you tell if that's growth or decay? That's growth. And what are the important spots? That spot and this spot. And this is called the what? Start. So let's say it starts at uh, 2. And then I'm going to even say that that's what comma what. Actually, I'm going to make you figure it out. That's what comma what. Because sometimes they don't say what point it is, but you should be able to figure it out. This point right here is, let's say it's over 10 and up 12, so it's going to be 10 comma 12. I'd like you to write me the equation for that. Pausing. So hopefully you're saying to yourself, I need one of these equations, y equals a, b to the x. And then you stick in the start value, then you'll know a pretty quickly. Then you solve for b, that's the hard part, and then write the equation. Or stick in this point into x and y, and if you can do it a faster way, I'm okay with that. Then stick in this point into the x and y after you know a. And you'll be able to solve for b. And it is OK to have answers like 2 thirds to the uh, 1 12th power as b. If your b comes out like that, that's fine. OK, when you're done, compare with the kid next to you. I'll pause for a second while you try that. OK, hopefully it didn't take you too long to figure out this is 0 comma 2. And you stick in x is 0, y is 2. You figure out pretty quickly that a must be 2. Yay. Now I do it again. y equals a, b to the x. I hope you will be really sick of writing that because you're going to do it so many times. Then if a is 2, I'm sticking the 2 right here. Now i got to stick in another point, this point, 10, 12. x goes in here as 10. y is 12. 12 equals a, b to the 10th. Then, uh, a, wait a minute, I know a, a is 2. Divide by 2 on both sides. 6 equals b to the 10th. How do I fix that? 
put them both to the power of one tenth. And like I said, b can be a weird thing. This is six to the one tenth power. Raise your hand if you got that. Good. Now, how many of you actually wrote the final equation then? See, a lot. Of, there's a fair drop out there. I had a lot of people had this and didn't actually write it. Here's how you actually write it. A is two. B is six to the one tenth. And then I need the x. And this is important too. The x can go either on top because if I had an x, it's really x over one. So it could be x over ten, or it could be one tenth x. What you don't want to do is let your x drift down here. That implies you multiply by 1 over x. You don't. That x is on top. So that would be wrong. This would be right, or x over 10. And this could have a parenthesis around it. At minimum, it would need a times in between the 2 and the 6. Any questions on that? That's kind of a review of most of the things. Now, I'm going to show you an application problem and see if you kind of naturally know what to do. Yes? Good question. Technically, this is right, but it's better if the one-tenth is outside the parentheses. It even Either way, it's going to be one-tenth times the x, right? So try to get used to doing it that way. All right. Because our b, we really want our b to... Yeah. Either way is okay. I just like it this way better. I think it looks more clean. Okay, moving on. Here is a real-world question uh, or a real-world scenario. Imagine the population of Minnetonka. It has been growing. It's around 55,000 right now. Let's say in the year... Uh, two th uh, too many zeros. In the year 2000. 15 is 55,000. In the year 2000, let's say 20, let's say that it's projected to go up to 65,000. That's two points on a graph. From our perspective, the starting value is which of those two? The 55,000. Do you get why? the numbers will be messed up if I leave the numbers this way? What are starting values supposed to have for their x? Zero. So we need to tweak this a little bit and say, OK, this is really like year what? Zero, because it's a starting value. And then this is like year what then? How many years later? Five. Do you see how I need to change my data to make it work nicer? Now it's just y equals a b to the x. You stick in your starting value, which is 55. And then your b you can figure out by sticking in this point. I bet a lot of people would have put in 2020 instead of 5. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, so the x of it is 5, so that would go here. And the other one's 65,000, and that would go here. All right. There's another way to think of it. Let's say that I had a wolf population. We were talking about uh, how the population of the uh, great big moose, the moose population was going down in Minnesota, right? What's been going up? I a guess from what I wrote on the board. Wolves. Do you think it kind of goes together? You get more wolves, you're going to probably eat the moose. Okay, and it's not, it's not quite that simple. They don't think, but they don't know for sure. It might be that simple. You got a lot more wolves running around out there eating the moose. The problem is they'll come across the moose carcass and it'll have been eaten by wolves. Does that prove that the wolves killed the moose? See what I mean? Just because they ate it doesn't mean that they're the reason the moose died. The moose might have died from something else. Maybe, you guys have all seen those crime uh, TV shows, maybe we've got a psycho killer that's decided to kill wolves. 
I didn't make it look like the, there, no, killed, killing moose. And that's why we have so many fewer moose in Minnesota than they do like in northern, uh, you know, Wisconsin and northern Michigan. We seem to be doing great there. Maybe we got our local moose cycle killer. And he's covering it up by letting the wolves eat the, the leftover carcasses so you never can tell. Doubt it. Okay, anyway. If the wolf population is going up, here is a real world scenario right now. Let's say that we have uh, 7,000 wolves in the state of Minnesota. And it's going up at 15% per year. I want to know when will it hit 10,000 wolves. We're the land of 10,000 lakes. When will we be the land of 10,000 wolves? So you start by making yourself an equation. A, B to the X. We know A is 7,000. It's that simple. You can just plug it right in. But the B is not given to us quite that. It wasn't that simple. I didn't just say B was equal to this. But you can figure out B. You can figure out X. You can figure out what to put here. I'm going to let you think it through. Try to solve it. Let's see how many of you can. Okay, give it a shot. I know some of you are going to have to ask the kid next to you how to set this up, but I'm going to pause for a second in the hopes that at least half of you can figure this out. Got on that one. Okay, so I'm getting indications that I need to help. So first thought, if it's going up 15%, how many of you knew to put 1 plus 0.15 in there? Raise your hand if you had that part. Good. All right. When will it hit 10,000? It's really not that complicated from here. I either have to put in the X or I have to put in the Y. Which one do I know? Do I know the time or do I know the end? Remember how this is end? Do I know the time or do I know the end? I know the end. The end is 10,000. So you put a 10,000 here. Did any of you get that far? At least three-fourths of you. Okay. This is a typical homework question for today, which means it's a typical question for the test. All right, so now how do you solve this? You've got to get rid of this first, so we divide by 7,000 get to get this clump right here alone. Dividing by 7,000. You can cancel zeros. One, 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 one. It's 10 sevenths. You didn't have to cancel that, but it makes your life a little easier here. 1 plus 0.15 to the x. Now, what the heck do I do now? I think that, I'm guessing that's where a lot of people got stuck. Raise your hand if that's where you got stuck. Okay, good. Okay. So, if I want to get rid of an x in the exponent, you have to use logs. Now, we haven't done logs yet. But, what's another way, think back now, that I said you could solve almost any problem in the world if you could use this. You can solve by using your calculator is probably a good guess since I just told you to take out your calculators. And then how do you what do you what do you do on the calculator? What's that thing that helps so much? There's a reason that we don't let you use calculators half the time. Because you can solve almost every problem out there by what? Yes, it's logs, but I'm not going to use logs because you haven't learned them yet. Yeah, it's always division. <laughs> no, it's not always division. Okay, I'll get you out of your misery. You graph both sides and you see where they cross. You graph this side, you graph this side, and you see where they cross. y equals 10 sevenths, and y equals 1 plus 0.15 to the x. The 1 is going to be an exponential. You just learned how they looked yesterday. This is the graph thing where it goes kind of like this. Okay? And then the 10 sevenths, that's just a straight line that's going to go across like this. Wherever they cross, that's the answer. Graph both sides and see where they cross. Okay, if you haven't got a calculator right now, would you please come borrow one? If you've got a calculator, would you please put both those in on your calculator screen? I'm going to pause for a second while I do that. All right, I am going to wrap up that part of the video by just saying 
when they rough sketch that's generally what the two equations look like when they cross and where they cross that's the answer and you need the x of it to get your answer so whatever x is right there that's your answer to the question okay moving on to our homework for today uh, which is called applications of exponential equations the first few are extremely easy they're just going to ask you for instance uh, to name let's see tell whether it's exponential growth or exponential decay if this number is bigger than one it's growth that's pretty easy name the growth or decay factor that one it's best if you do what I said and write it as one plus something then you'll know that right there that's the growth or decay factor then find the constant percentage rate of growth or decay basically you find it by once you're uh, done this is your growth or decay and that's it okay how are you gonna do that with something like this rewrite this as one minus something would give you 0.968 you don't say 1 minus 0.968 you say 1 minus something 0 0.0 something that would give you this for an answer so 1 minus some decimal you have to play with that and yes on this it'd be easier if you had a calculator but if you have to just play with it keep guessing and checking like okay 0.032 is that it and then I subtract 32 cents from $9.68 you know play around in your head this is a no calculator part. All right. Yes? Question? Okay, not a question. Moving on. Here is, uh, let's look at number, wait, I think you can skip a few of these. Um, let's, the common mistake here is people think it's 5% decay and they forget to rewrite it as one minus something. So it's actually like 95% decay. I don't actually want to skip any of those because I want you to see all the possible little twists. All right, moving on. Number seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They're all about the same. So um, the only thing that might be different would be like this: doubling every three days. Let's look at number fifteen together. Starting is initial. Initial, I hope you know, means start. So it's y equals starting value 0 0.6. The b value. How do I do doubling? What rate is that? It's one plus something, right? One plus what? One plus one, that's doubling. Okay, doubling every three days. Every three days, how are we supposed to do that? Here's our time factor up there where it's X, right? Doubling every three days divided by three. Per three days, you know, like if you said I, I get one uh, sheep every three days, okay, divide by three then, per three, out of every three days. All right, so that's the only kind I hadn't explained to you is like number 15. We'll practice that again tomorrow. Here it says every six years. Are you supposed to, you just have to say in days. So this other one, it's divided by six. And then you say in years. Don't have to do any complicated conversion or anything. What's tripling? One plus two is tripling. To the X, and then in X case, it's per 7.5 hours divided by 7.5. And that's in hours. Okay, and now in the last part, uh, this is one of those kind where you'd have to use the calculator to, and graph it to solve it, so it doesn't say that there, but you can use the calculator on number 19. All right, and again, feels a little bit long, so why don't we uh, skip number uh, 23 and 22. Or 22 and 23 are skips. All right, that's all I got for you for today.